We're here in Grable, Indiana, and we're visiting with Margaret Ringenberg. I just had the opportunity to read her book, Girls Can't Be Pilots, and it's a fascinating book about her life. Margaret, you began flying in 1940, and here we are 60 years later, sitting in your home, and you're still flying. I've enjoyed every minute of it, had a lot of experiences. I read in your book you grew up on a farm. What got you interested in flying? Uh, when I was, oh, probably seven, eight years old, we had just gotten our first car. We had just moved to the farm, and my dad wanted to go back and look at some of the buildings he had, barns he had built uh, down by Burn, Indiana. And an airplane landed in a field down there. My dad, being the curious type, uh, went over and stopped, and the pilot came over and took us for a ride. I remember my dad got to sit up in front, and I had to sit back with the other girls and my mother. And I think maybe the seed was planted at that time because growing up I knew I couldn't be a pilot because I was a girl. So I was going to, I thought, be a stewardess and started working the GE to make money to go to nurses training. And while um, I was there, I got to thinking about what if the pilot got sick? So I went out to Smithfield at Fort Wayne and started taking lessons, and I haven't got around to nurses' training. Or even being a stewardess. I, went, I thought I had to be a stewardess, but I wanted to be up in the airplane, and I thought it was the only way I could do it. Then World War II broke out, and there was this uh, call from Uncle Sam. Tell us uh, how you became a WASP, w woman's air service pilot. How did that all begin, Margaret? It, it actually... Um, I had no idea any other women were flying. There were a few here in Fort Wayne, but uh, I didn't know that they were going into the service. And one day the neighbor girl come running down the road and she said, they, we've got a telegram at our house. We didn't have a phone. And uh, so I went down and got the telegram and the telegram said my services was needed. If interested, go to Chicago for an interview. and. Uh, I went for the interview. I ended up at Sweetwater. So they apparently uh, took all licensed women pilots and sent them telegrams. Is that how that worked? That's right. All licensed pilots. And I guess when I filled out the application where it said phone, I put our tele neighbor's phone number on thinking I really didn't want people to know we didn't have a telephone. So I put their number and they got the call. Well, Margaret, uh, right in the beginning, what was the attitude out there? You're a girl, and uh, in your book, Girls Can't Be Pilots, how were you treated? I was treated quite well. Of course, the war has started. People, the fellows was being drafted, and uh, they were just happy to see someone to come and uh, that had some money. And I was, I was really treated quite well by Pierce Flying Service, where I came back and instructed afterwards. And Pierce Flying Service, right over here at Smithfield. At Smithfield, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Let's take it and go on further. The WASPs called you up, and and really, that's where your the real adventure begins for you. Well, here I am flying a, a little J3 Cub, and now they put me into a PT-19, and I thought it was a terribly big airplane. And uh, then into the BTs and the AT-6s, and... UC 78s, and they just kept growing. Now, how long uh, were you in training before you actually started ferrying airplanes? Uh, we were in six months before I got my wings, and then I was sent to Wilmington, Delaware, 2nd Ferrying Division, where I worked out of. All that training was just as rigorous as it w would have been for the men. Did you feel you had to work just a little extra hard? I didn't think a whole lot about it. I mean, what they, it was kind of like they told us to do something or they told us to jump. We said how high. We we were willing to do it. Any uh, particular experience during your training uh, where you were concerned about washing out or you had to, all these little tests, uh, anything ever were you? Oh, all the way along in the first place. I, I did come from a small school. I knew the other girls in my bay that I lived with had all been to college, and uh, I felt very inferior. Then uh, you, the big day came. You graduated. 
got your wings. Tell us what happened then. Well, I came home for a, a short time and then took a train to Wilmington, Delaware, and I started ferrying. As soon as we got there, they had orders to go to Hagerstown, Maryland, and uh, check out the airplane. We test up the airplanes right off the assembly line, and if it was available, I mean, if it was in good shape, we took it to the fields for the boys to fly. And Margaret, at, at that time, were you flying VFR instrument? Tell us what it was like uh, on a typical trip cross-country. Oh, it was strictly VFR. Did not have my instrument ticket yet. And uh, so we'd pick them up, and uh, uh, we had our parachutes, our B-4 bags along, and we'd start out whether we were delivering them to Calgary, Canada, or if we were taking them to Texas. When we'd get to the point of delivery, we then would find our own way home, whether it was plane, train, or a bus, and we rode a lot of buses. What uh, what type of airplanes were you ferrying? Uh, I worked out of Hagerstown, BT-19s and 26s. I had ferry work in BTs and AT-6s, UC-78s. Uh, worked out of the Piper factory, the L-4s. Uh, I've got C-54 and B-24 time. Got my first instrument ticket on a DC-3 eventually. Now, this tour of duty was about a year and a half. How many hours would you have accumulated in that period of time? Uh, I accumulated over a thousand. Yeah, I was an eager beaver. I I was happy to go get the L fours or whatever they wanted flown, and I was busy. So you were flying seven days a week. Seven days a week, daytime only. We did not fly at night. Of course, sometimes you run into weather, and you was weathered in for days. In fact, I thought one time I would take up knitting. <laughs> <laughs> because we were weathered in a long time, and I went and got the wool, and I got the needles. Knitting wasn't for me.